Welcome back to The Core Cutting Today, where we break down some of the biggest stories happening in the world of cord cutting, including today, Redbox is in real trouble as their parent company sees revenue drop 75% year over year. Paramount and Amazon are in talks for another bundle. We had one from Comcast, Netflix, and Apple. We have one from Disney and Warner Bros. Discovery. Now, Paramount and Amazon, we'll tell you what we know there. And Disney Plus is getting ESPN. We break down everything that's happening there and more. First though, if you wanna learn more about these stories, I will put a link to each story about these and many more in the first pinned comment in the show so you can read them for yourself and come up with your own opinions. I'd love to hear from you. If you're new here, do me a big favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, let YouTube know you enjoy what we do here so YouTube can recommend um, our videos to more people hopefully and hopefully help you break free from the high cost of television and still watch the shows you enjoy. With that said, uh, let's dive into it. Redbox's parent company, Chicken Soup for the Soul, which bought Redbox a couple of years ago, um, at, in 2022, excuse me, for $50 million, uh, filed last week um, in earnings where it's announced that its revenue dropped 75% in the first quarter compared to the same period of 2023, according to an SEC file spotted by Next TV. Chicken Soup for the Soul is a, in a tough situation. Spent a lot of money for Redbox. Just as A, the strike happened, no big uh, new movies happened for a while. Pandemic uh, recovery was definitely part of that. But also a big thing they do is they own Crackle, they own the Redbox streaming service and others They give free ad support streaming. Well, ad revenues are down across the board, definitely negatively impacting them. Put this all together and 75% revenue down. Now, a lot of people talk about, oh, we love discs. We want physical media, don't let it go away. But then people just don't go to the stores and get physical media like they used to. I'll tell you this, people are very upset at Best Buy and Target and other places for getting rid of or reducing their DVD stocks. But I'll be honest, if stores had people buying them, they wouldn't do it. There's a reason why they've decided to not use that shelf space for DVDs and Blu-rays anymore instead of use it for other items because there isn't the demand there used to be. And that's really hurt Redbox here. It'd be very interesting to see what happens here. They're also facing delisting from the um, stock exchange because the price of their um, stock has dropped below a dollar for too long. That would definitely hurt too. Uh, and they've even explored, the parent company, a sale of some assets, though nothing has come from that so far. So give you a prediction. Question of the day. A year from now, five years from now, what? How long do you think Redbox is a DVD service? All those kiosks will continue. Do you think Redbox had its day and it's now going to go away as people uh, move away from Redboxes? Leave me a comment, let me know. I want to hear from you. All right, let's keep moving along. Paramount and Amazon are reportedly in talks for a new streaming bundle. According to a report from Bloomberg, uh, Amazon and Paramount are in talks for a possible streaming bundle. Details are very thin, the talks are very early. Paramount has multiple streaming services, including uh, BET Plus, Paramount Plus, with that. Now, they could bundle that. You could also see them do a bundle also with some of the Amazon services. Of course, they have Prime Video, but they also own MGM Plus. You could see a MGM Plus and Paramount Plus bundle. I think, um, was it Stars and Paramount, uh, or MGM Plus has a bundle. There's already a bundle version of that. I could very much see Paramount Plus do that. Exact details are unknown. According to the report, talks are very early and nothing may come from them, but they are in talks looking at options. This comes as Disney and Warner Bros. Discovery have a bundle of Disney Plus, Hulu, and Max coming. Comcast says this month, Peacock, Netflix, and Apple TV Plus will have their own bundle. There's also been talk that Paramount and uh, NBC Universal have been in talks for some type of either bundle or joint um, deal for Peacock and Paramount Plus also. Many um, companies out there are seeing bundles as a quick way to guarantee uh, some new subscribers, but more importantly, try to lock you in for a longer term subscription to their plan. A lot of people nowadays subscribe for a few months, binge watch stuff, and then cancel and go forward from there with that. So we'll have to keep a very close eye on this and how it plays out. All right, next story up, Disney Plus will have some ESPN content in December. That's the new news. We knew this was coming, but it's coming in December. And all ESPN channels in 2025. Details are unknown. Sounds like in December, it'll be a part of your current plan that you'll get some ESPN live games, much like how Max has some TNT TBS games live. But now that will happen with 
um, Disney Plus. Now in 2025, when they launch the ESPN standalone streaming service, it'll be available on Disney Plus. I'm assuming from the wording of everything and what we're hearing that it'll be an add-on with this. Um, that you'll pay an extra fee and then be able to add live ESPN channels. Very interested to see that. It really sounds like Disney wants to make the Disney Plus app. It's a one-stop shop for everything. I wonder though, because Hulu's on-demand content's been merged in, will they ever move, merge Hulu's live TV content from Hulu into Disney Plus's app? I find it kind of interesting they have not done that. With them moving ESPN channels in, it doesn't seem like it'd be that much harder to move Hulu in. Maybe they are working on that. I don't know. It seems like a natural next step. Be interesting to see what they do. Now, if you own a Fire TV and you're downloading apps, be careful to the wording. Um, AFTV News spotted this first, but now sub downloading some apps, depending on how you download them, will automatically subscribe you to those apps through your Amazon account. Um, for example, Paramount Plus and others, if you download them, you can do download only, but by default, it's download and subscribe. You need to pay attention to that otherwise it will subscribe you. Now, I hear a lot of people say, why would you download it if you didn't want to subscribe? I think that's legitimate, but I think it's a little easy for people to accidentally do it just because they want to check out an app, maybe take a look, see if it has any free preview content with it. Um, just keep in mind, again, if you have, especially if it's a free trial, because that makes it even more confusing the way they do the wording, but if you're downloading apps, on your screen, read the read what that button says. Don't just assume you're clicking the download app. You may be clicking the download and subscribe app. So just a PSA of the day, if you want to fire TV, just be very careful what you're clicking on with that. Overall, I actually like the idea. I like the idea of um, making signing up even easier because I do agree that most people who are downloading apps are probably downloading because they're either already subscribed or they intend to subscribe. I think that's a big thing there though. If you're already subscribed separately, just looking to log in, that you don't accidentally double subscribe. Keep a close eye on it. Make sure you're always reading what you're clicking and especially with the new Fire TV settings. All right, next up, T-Mobile will be facing a class action lawsuit over its $26 billion purchase of Sprint. T-Mobile is facing a class action lawsuit that they tried to get dismissed at the um, uh, Seventh Circuit Appeals Court of Chicago area, but they denied the request to ban a class action lawsuit over the merger. Some people are arguing that because of this, there's less competition in the United States, driving, which will drive up the price of wireless. Now, T-Mobile had to make some concessions, the DOJ, for example, selling off Boost Mobile to Dish, which made Dish the fourth largest provider of wireless phones in the United States. But with this though, um, there's some pressure here to, a, to um, put some limits on this and maybe even undo the merger where Sprint must be spun off into an independent company. I won't lie, it's probably pretty hard to do. T-Mobile has fully integrated, shut down things, and moved people into the T-Mobile experience from Sprint. It's not fully gone, but Sprint, what it used to be, is very restricted now. A lot of those people have been migrated to T-Mobile. Leave me a comment. Let me know. Do you think there's a legitimate case? T-Mobile says there's not. There's no proof anybody's been harmed, and there's still a lot of competition. you got Comcast and um, Spectrum with very aggressive price points getting into wireless service. Yes, they're reselling things like Verizon, uh, but that's one option. You also have Dish building out their 5G network to become a true competitor here in the wireless space as the fourth major provider of wireless services in the United States. So let me comment. Let me know what you think of this here. All right, let's get into the deal of the day. Um, it is Stream Week. And DirecTV Stream is, uh, has a great bundle that will allow you to save $90 on three months of DirecTV. This knocks 30 bucks off a month for three months, bringing your price down to $49.99. If you've been thinking about trying DirecTV Stream, this is a great time to do that. Link in the show notes down below if you want to try that out. If you're new here, do me a big favor. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that thumbs up. Let YouTube know you enjoy what we do here. I really appreciate it. If you have a question for me, though, let me kind of force a habit. Um, leave a comment. Start off with question for Luke. Every day I take a look at them. Some I will reply in the comments, especially if there's um, not a long answer. Some I'll reply here in the video, including today. Had a lot of questions about these bundle services again. And my and the, one of the things I've been asked a lot is what bundle would I like? And I want to turn that on to you. What is your dream bundle of streaming services? And honestly, for me, um, it would probably be a bundle of 
um, what's already out there. I think the Disney Hulu is a great bundle. I think Disney Plus though and Netflix. If those two got together, I think that's a quite compelling service. Disney Plus, all the kids content and a good amount of content for me on there, uh, but my kids need it. But Netflix, I've really enjoyed Netflix. It's consistently, even when I kind of dropped it for a little while, been one I keep going back to. I'm really enjoying the new season of Full Swim. Um, I really enjoy uh, Last Chance You on there. A lot of other great content on Netflix that uh, we haven't seen in other places. Because of that, I'm gonna have to say Disney and Netflix would be the two in my house that I would subscribe to as a bundle and keep all year. So I wanna know from you, what is your dream bundle between the two? Is it Disney Plus and Hulu? That's already there. What about Par um, Paramount Plus? What would you bundle with that? Leave me a comment. If you could build a bundle, let's not talk about price, but assume it's some type of discount better than paying for each one individually. What is it? For me, the two I'd probably subscribe to all year right now is Netflix and Disney Plus. Well, that's it for today. Take care, be safe. I'll be back again real soon. Take care and be safe.